MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Bozeman Superintendent of Schools now has two proposals for trimming a big budget deficit. Just ahead, learn how one includes asking for more money from taxpayers. Doctors are warning about the most contagious COVID subvariant to date. I'm Michael George with why experts say the latest booster shot is so important. Happy Tuesday, Southwest Montana, 6.30. Joe Lehman, Matt Elwell with you here. A lovely morning out around. We had some snow in places. I had... I, I, I can't even hardly say it was a dusting because I didn't even leave tracks across my <laughs> deck. Across. It wasn't deep enough you to had leave some, a footprint. You had some snow but on the deck, some, yeah. I did have some. And I had nothing at my right. house. Uh, four corners, I didn't see anything. No. There might have been a few snowflakes trying to flutter through our skies. It really didn't end up being much of anything no. if you saw it. Depends on where you are, obviously. Well, course, uh, out toward Reynolds Pass, it does look a little dicey mm -hmm. out there. So uh, there are some areas picking up snow, mainly in that uh, winter weather advisory area, which I'll detail in a bit. Temperatures this morning, a uh, mix in temperatures, teens and 20s. We did cool a little bit in Belgrade over the last couple of hours. Uh, it does look like we see more sunshine for at least part of the day. The clouds trying to roll back in as you get into the late afternoon, early part of the evening. Still some moisture out there, but I don't think we're going to see much in the form of snow. Daytime highs into the 30s, more sunshine, mild ish. Uh, it does look like some uh, warmer temperatures are on the way by the end of the work week. We're of course going to talk more in depth about that coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Matt. 631 last night at the Bozeman School Board meeting, Superintendent Casey Bertram presented revised recommendations on how to balance the district's $4.1 million budget deficit. The revised recommendation includes a plan A and a plan B. Plan A recommendation relies on the successful passage of the voted safety levy by taxpayers. Plan B mirrors recommendations if the voted safety levy is not approved by voters. Superintendent's budget recommendation for our Bozeman School District 7 elementary schools includes decreasing building and department budgets by 10%, reducing gifted program staffing, and eliminating the Bozeman Charter School. Now, both high school and elementary school recommendations include reductions in certified staffing. This includes 14 employees at the high school level, 13 at the elementary level, resulting in letting go of 27 employees if the safety levy does not pass. Budget recommendation for the high school includes increasing extracurricular participation fees, increasing external facility user fees, and reducing central office or building administration. Several community members did comment on those proposals. Facing a budget deficit this large calls for creative solutions. You have my letter with three proposal solutions, one of which you are considering, that of a teacher on special assignment, acronymically called a TOSA, just like in Billings. I've also asked you to consider the sale of the Wilson Building. Superintendent Bertram says he is extremely grateful for the work of the budget committee and the large number of student staff and community members who have participated in that process. Public comment still open if you email it to trustees at bsd7.org. Other education news, Montfortin schools are also facing some tough choices. With the Four Corners area seeing rapid growth, school officials are trying to stay ahead of the game. MTN's Edgar Cedillo spoke with the district superintendent on expansion proposals. Rapid growth in the Four Corners region has meant Montfort and schools are now looking at possibility of expansion on their campus and now they're getting ready to present three ideas to the community. Over the past 10 years, we've had four building projects just dealing with the growth in Four Corners. Montfort and school officials are gearing up to present the community with potential options for the school's expansion. Again, utilization on the space that we have right now, and ultimately in those three options that we're going to ask for feedback. With current enrollment nearing 700 students, Montfort and superintendent wants to stay ahead of the curb with continued growth in the Four Corners region, as they expect to see enrollment continue to increase. We see more houses coming up and more housing projects kind of on the on the horizon. They have three proposals for the master plan that they are set to present to the public which will focus on the future of Montfort and schools for the next five to twenty years. The purpose of this meeting that we're having on Wednesday is just to try and get their feedback. The public is invited to attend their meeting at the middle school gym this Wednesday at 6 p.m. in Four Corners at Grisadillo, MTN News. Treasure State headlines on this Tuesday in Billings, a man in custody following a police standoff tied to not one but three crime scenes. We're still learning more about what happened, who was injured, and who was killed. 
MTN's Jackie Coffin was there as the standoff stretched on till SWAT members could finally get in and make an arrest. After seven hours, a police standoff with a man barricaded inside of a residence off of 12th Street has ended. It's about 1.30 in the morning and you can see emergency personnel and law enforcement breaking down and leaving the area after a very long night. Streets closed and SWAT teams deployed. Multiple agencies responded to a string of crime scenes up and down 12th Street. A man armed and barricaded inside a house on Burlington and 12th and refusing to come out after police say he shot and killed another man on the north side of Grand between Avenue E and Avenue F, stole the victim's car and drove down 12th Street at high speeds, crossing Grand and smashing into several cars in front of Big B Bingo, then running into a nearby house, shooting and injuring a person inside who was trying to flee. The man shot and injured trying to leave the house was taken to St. Vincent's Hospital. He was shooting out the window about, uh, about 30 minutes after the incident. Uh, we don't know what he was shooting at yet. The whole incident happened at about 6 p.m. Sunday, but it wasn't until seven hours later, around 1 a.m. Monday, that SWAT team members were able to enter the house after deploying gas and scanning the area with a bomb squad robot locate the man in a basement room and take him into custody without injury to the suspect or law enforcement. I would I would say that it speaks to the amount of skill and the training that the, that the SWAT team and negotiators and our bomb guys have uh, and the equipment that we're able to utilize. The pieces are still coming together. Firefighters say they initially were responding to a call of a shooting at a birthday party, that being the house on 12th and Burlington, where the suspect forced his way in and shot the person fleeing. Uh, and in this situation, it worked out to our benefit that, that we were able to come to a peaceful resolution and, and get this individual secured and off the streets. Law enforcement grateful that the standoff ended the way it did. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Another news closer to home, a former Bozeman daycare worker charged with assault on a child. According to an affidavit, Aurora Hunter Patterson was a daycare worker in Bozeman when a co-worker told police she saw Aurora shaking the crib of a crying baby very aggressively and fast. Co-worker said that Aurora was screaming, worked up and stressed out. Co-worker testified that Hunter Patterson shook the crib as if it was normal for her. According to court documents, the baby's arm hit the bars of the crib and the child was almost rolled completely over. The child's father called the Bozeman police from Bozeman Deaconess Hospital, where his infant son was being treated. Hunter Patterson, released on her own recognizance, will be seen again in February. Daycare fired her after that incident. Other news this morning, scientists are warning a new Omicron subvariant may be the most transmissible one to date. Doctors are urging Americans to protect themselves with the latest booster shot. CBS's Michael George has the details. A new year and a new COVID subvariant is driving up COVID-19 cases. The World Health Organization is calling XBB15 the most transmissible subvariant detected yet. It does have a growth advantage um, above all of the other subvariants so far. We don't have any data on severity yet or on the clinical picture. New CDC data shows cases, hospitalizations and deaths are trending upward at a time of year when hospitals are feeling the strain. Our ER is at full capacity and so is the hospital with critical care beds. With about a quarter of Americans living in high COVID-19 counties, the CDC is urging indoor masking in New York, Miami, Boston and Fort Worth. So I try to just keep going and do what I need to do from to try to stay safe. Experts say the number one thing people can do is get that latest booster. The new bivalent vaccine, this is the new one that we updated in September, uh, does seem to provide a good degree of protection against infection and terrific protection against serious illness. U.S. officials are also concerned about the growing COVID crisis in China and a lack of information sharing. One of the things that China is not doing is sharing its genomic surveillance data. Every other country does. Officials say that withholding makes it harder for the scientific community to spot new variants as they emerge. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Now, Michael also tells us the Paxlovid antiviral believed to be effective against the new subvariant for patients whose doctors recommend that treatment. 